Estonia, a small nation with a rich culture and a profound history. For centuries, the country has been passed between other nations, its people stripped of their heritage and never in control of their own governance. But throughout the years, one thing held Estonians together, singing. In the late 1980s, during their last occupation by the Soviet Union, they rebelled. Through their music, the people of Estonia protested as one voice against the Soviet Union's oppression. At the annual singing festival, they communicated their national pride to other Estonians through an anthem of freedom, sparking a revolution that resulted in their independence and the revival of their centuries-old culture. In the most peaceful revolution in history, the people of Estonia were able to rise up and communicate their power to the world. Using ethnic music as a tool, after hundreds of years of oppression, the Estonian people sang their way to liberty. Since the 13th century, Estonia has been occupied by various nations. In 1869, Estonia hosted the very first singing festival, where Estonians from around the country came together to sing cultural folk songs. The buildup of cultural pride led to a revolutionary war, after which the Estonian people declared their first independence in 1919. However, this freedom was short-lived. In 1939, Hitler and Stalin signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. Under this treaty, Russia would have control over the Baltic states. All pro-Estonia activities were banned, including speaking the language or displaying the flag. In just the first year, 2,000 were executed. Tens of thousands were arrested and deported to Russian camps in Siberia. You are sentenced without any, any court, sent to the Siberia for life. As tensions around the world rose, Germany attacked Russia via Estonia during World War II. However, at the end of the war, Russia pushed back, once again conquering Estonia. The war was over for the rest of the world, but for Estonia, this was just the beginning of a much worse chapter. Deportations, killings, and oppression resumed. In 1947, the Estonian people started to become tired of the cultural suppression, and after being planned through underground organizations, the first song festival since their independence was held. Estonian people came together and uh, to feel themselves as part of one community, part of the nation. The people sang a century-old poem, Land of my fathers, land that I love. To the Soviets, the song sounded like an ordinary folk song, but to the Estonians, singing it communicated a much deeper understanding, an anthem of independence. And somehow it slipped by the Soviet censors. That song was played at that first post-Soviet song festival and uh, it gave all Estonians hope. By the 1950s, the Soviet Union realized the significance of the song and attempted to quell the Estonian spirit by banning it and replacing it with Russian songs. The Soviets, I think, made a big miscalculation. They thought the song festivals became a fantastic opportunity for Soviet propaganda. Despite singing these songs, they were still singing together and that was all it took to inspire hope. Land of My Father's Land That I Love made a resurgence in 1969 on the 100th anniversary of the singing festival. As the Estonian people started to sing, officials ordered the band to drown them out but the Estonians simply sang louder, proving that they could not be suppressed. Singing raised the people's self-esteem, giving them a sense of community. This communication of unity was the key to giving courage to the protesters. Singing together is a unifying activity. There's no way around it. So these Estonians were there physically, but they were also doing an activity that even required that they breathe together. When Mikhail Gorbachev assumed power in 1983, the people in Estonia were given free speech. They knew that violence would never be successful against the Soviet military, so they continued along their non-violent path. Political reforms due to successful protests gave hope and a new means of communication to the people in Estonia and emboldened them. Trevimi Valista and Mart Lahr founded the Estonian Heritage Society in 1987 and became known as the first people to publicly voice the hope for liberty. On the other side, Russians that lived in Estonia formed Interfront, an anti-independence movement. But as more Estonians united, the freedom movement gained momentum. Nothing could stop it. Acts of defiance, like protesting a strip mine and creatively displaying the Estonian flag, fueled the fire for independence. In September 1988, another singing festival was held, but this time, the Estonian people planned an organized demonstration, 
with one-third of the Estonian population attending. After this event, as a means of nonconformity, half of the population declared themselves citizens of the Republic of Estonia. Finding a loophole in Soviet law, they formed their own government on the inside of the USSR. And so it happened. Uh, more than 700,000 people registered and came to voting and voted for Estonian Congress and the Estonian Congress gathered and uh, made a resolution uh, that Estonia is on way to restore the pre-war republic. A year later, in August 1989, an event known as the Baltic Chain took place and it would become the catalyst for what would happen next. Today, two million residents of the Baltic states linked hands to protest not only what happened 50 years ago, but to send a message of defiance to Moscow today. A human chain of protest. In Tallinn, the Estonian capital, hundreds of thousands turned out to mourn what they see as their loss of independence. People all across the Baltic states formed a line for nearly 400 miles. It stretched from Estonia through Latvia to Lithuania. Because of the lack of response from the Soviet Union, step by step, the Estonian people's progress towards independence grew. Finally, the peaceful conflict reached a climax when the Soviets brought the military into the country in January 1991. Armored vehicles crowded the streets, and all methods of contact were cut off. At the Vilnius television tower, the last form of communication for the Estonians, Soviet troops forced their way through a wall of civilian defenders. They created a plan, which was to say, there's a fire extinguishing system that releases some sort of gas to put out the fire, but it's a gas that is gonna kill people. It's deadly. So if you guys come in here and try to take us over, I'm setting off the fire system and all your soldiers are gonna die. Soviet leaders were offered a choice. The soldiers sat in front of the tower for days, awaiting a response from Moscow. But in Russia, another conflict was brewing. Thousands were angry that Gorbachev was allowing these events to play out in Estonia, so they staged a coup calling for a new leader. Destabilizing it, this led to a downward spiral, and after a few months, the Soviet Union was no more. In a unanimous vote among the Estonian Congress, Estonia declared their full independence on August 21st, 1991. After gaining their freedom, the people of Estonia worked on restoring their nation. Over the next month, countries around the world accepted Estonia as an independent country, and in September of 1991, Estonia joined the UN. The constitution of the Republic of Estonia was implemented in 1992. Russian troops were finally withdrawn in late 1994. Estonia gained its independence after almost 800 years total of occupation, and with it they gained the freedom to express their culture without the fear of being killed. Sometimes it looks like a a uh, miracle or fairy tale, but as I have seen this with my own eyes, so it's absolutely true. Showing the world the power of music and nonviolence, the singing revolution gave rise to singing as a new form of protest used as a method of unification in events around the globe, such as the Arab Spring in 2010, where people around the Middle East used singing to protest against governmental oppression, and in modern social justice events such as the climate strike, March for Our Lives, and protests for racial equality, where people sing together to communicate their feelings and power. Today in Estonia, song festivals similar to those during the singing revolution are still held every five years, allowing Estonians to remember and cherish their culture. Throughout the Estonian singing revolution, the people proved time and time again that their movement was not one of bloodshed or violence, but instead one of speaking out and above all singing. A small oppressed country, part of a massive empire, was able to achieve its independence without spilling one drop of blood. Through their unified voices, they demanded a return to Estonian culture and freedom. Today, the Singing Revolution songs still carry the same spirit as an audible window into the world of previous Estonians, who showed that coming together and singing with unity can overcome even the strongest military powers in the world. <laughs>